Hey family, what's going on? Klaus here. I just wanted to bring you guys another pro tip. This is like a life pro tip, something that I have been researching a lot and it's kind of insane. So the last video I brought to you guys was talking about iodine, selenium and unrefined sea salt. If you guys didn't see that, I highly recommend you check it out. There will be a link in the description to that video or just look at my latest video uh, before this one on my channel feed. However, there's something just as important as iodine that pretty much everybody's deficient in. And I want to mention this. We are made up of all these different types of minerals, all these different types of vitamins. And it is very unfortunate, but many people don't recognize the importance of being saturated in the things that your body needs to accomplish goals. Whatever, whatever that goal may be, if it's energy or rest or uh, digestion or thinking or whatever you need the things that your body needs in order to perform these tasks and be good at them and if you don't get them you're good you're not going to operate on the level that you should be operating and if you go long enough you can have some serious side effects cancers and diseases and death so solving these types of things is very important we spoke on the last video about iodine that 96 percent of at least the American population are deficient in iodine. That comes directly from Dr. Brownstein's research and his book, Iodine, Why You Need It, Why You Can't Live Without It. And lots of other people are echoing the same thing. Now, magnesium is nearly just as bad. Magnesium is essential in energy production. Every single bit of ATP, which is the energy currency, the chemical energy currency in your body, requires magnesium to perform its function and get where it needs to go. So if you don't have enough magnesium, you're not operating on the right level, right? 80% of the American population are deficient in magnesium. Why? Why are we so deficient in all these things? Well, it's because the majority of these things are found in the ocean. And not everybody lives near the ocean. Why are they in the ocean and not in our dirt? There's lots of good theories behind that. But We'll just leave it at that. It's in the ocean. It's not on the, on the land, especially in the middle of the country. So the question is, how do you know that you need magnesium? Well, the, I mean, mathematically speaking, you're 80% likely to need it. And even if you aren't part of that 80%, you're on your way down because the total amount of magnesium consumption in the American diet, at least, is on a steady decline. So if you're not deficient now, you will be. And so... I highly recommend everybody check out magnesium and supplement that because it's just going to change some stuff. Now, let me tell you some of the symptoms of a magnesium deficiency. Number one is muscle cramps. Now, the first thing you think when you think of a muscle cramp is actually a potassium issue, but most of the time it's actually magnesium. And it could be potassium. It could be both. But... Most of the time, it's magnesium. So if you get muscle cramps when you're just doing stuff, moving around, walking, walking uphill, you get a muscle cramp in your hamstring, that is a really good sign that you're deficient in magnesium. Another thing is sleeplessness. And I didn't really have an issue with my sleep. I feel like my sleep improved greatly once I started taking iodine. But it helps you on your, your body level to just relax just a little bit more. And if you have something like restless leg syndrome, which I didn't even know I had, but apparently I did because I could never lay flat on my back. I always felt this strange, tingly need to roll over onto my side. And it was always in my hip flexors in the front of the legs near the hips that always gave me this feeling. And I would stretch those muscles and it wouldn't help. The only time I didn't have that is whenever I would work really hard that day and I was physically exhausted. I like sleeping on my back. It's my favorite position, but I can never stay in that position because of this restless leg syndrome. Well, now that I've been taking magnesium, and I'll get into which type because there's lots of different types of magnesium, um, that feeling started to go away, and it's significantly better now. And some of it, I think, is mental. But I was able to sleep a lot better this past couple of nights. Magnesium is amazing. Uh, other things that are kind of signs that you have an issue with magnesium are things like fatigue and again that's because magnesium is essential in energy production uh if you uh you have weak bones or joints which you don't really know unless you hurt yourself and 
pretty much all forms of relaxation, if you feel stressed out, if you don't handle stress or anxiety, or if you're always anxious, you probably have a magnesium deficiency. And this isn't something that only affects old people. If you're younger, I, I mean, I don't know, whenever I was in junior high, I was having lower back pain. And that's honestly the main reason why I started to research magnesium was because of my lower back pain from an old injury. If I'm sitting in a chair like I am now, my back is going to hurt. Well, ever since I started taking the magnesium, those pain symptoms started to get better. Didn't matter how much I stretched. It was always there. So I'm a believer. Let's just put it that way. So there's a lot of different forms of magnesium and they all kind of have their benefits. But I decided to go with the cheapest, most natural form to start with. And that is magnesium chloride. I'll put a link in the description to what I bought. I'm not affiliated or anything. It's just, I'm just telling you guys what works for me. It is just a simple magnesium chloride bond. And it's considered a salt, though it does not taste like salt. It tastes like chalk, honestly. You want to mix it maybe with your sea salt in your cup if you take this stuff. And it says on the bag, because it is a bag of, of, it looks like salt, how much you should take and everything. And it's a, it's a good suggestion. I would take a little more, but that's because I'm a bit of a taller, bigger person than the average person. So I, I generally just take more of everything. But magnesium chloride is super cheap. I bought a four pound bag for $30. It's going to last me and my wife easy two years. And you get the benefit of the magnesium, but you also get the magnesium or the, the, you also get the benefit of the chlorine or the chloride, which is used in detoxing. So if you're taking your refined sea salt and you're taking your selenium and your iodine, you're detoxing things like fluoride and bromide and radioactive iodide. If you got that in your, in the environment, um, you're detoxing this stuff and the chlorine does that or the chloride does that. So getting extra chloride in your magnesium, it's great. It's awesome. You get to detox even faster. There's also other forms, good forms and bad forms. I'll just quickly brush on this, I guess. Um, the type that I'm really looking forward to trying out, but it's very expensive, is called magnesium 3 and 8. And that's supposed to penetrate the blood-brain barrier and helps you with your cognitive function. It helps uh, uh, improve the density of your nerve fibers in your brain. I definitely want to give that one a try. Sounds like it's awesome. Uh, there's also magnesium glycinate, magnesium orinate, magnesium torate, which I think are probably the other three that I'll try. And they all have their benefits. You know, like if you're an active, if you're an athlete, you know, you may want to try torate. Uh, if you have digestive issues, try glycinate. I believe that one's probably one of the best ones. I'm not entirely sure what ornate does, but it's a good one too. There's some that aren't very good. Uh, magnesium oxide supposedly is not not as good. You don't absorb that one as well, or or it, you you don't know the quality of that one. Magnesium citrate has mixed reviews, so I just avoid it because there's other forms. But magnesium chloride is probably your best bet. There's a lot of doctors that swear by it. I'll be sharing links in the description for lots of resources and links to buy it. Um, if you guys are interested in doing that, there's no downside to it. You'll feel better. It's interesting. It helps you relax when you're supposed to be relaxing. It helps you deal with stress better because you're just more on a, you're more chill, but then it helps you with your energy. So when you need the energy, it's there. It's like the ultimate mineral to have. I would put, I would put the importance near iodine, if not above iodine, which is crazy to me. But it is what it is. So if you have any questions about this stuff, let me know in the comments. I'll be sharing with you guys any other information that I gather. Um, and yeah, have a good one. God bless.